been to jail. I've never owned a gun. I hate that anyone at all might possibly be afraid of me. I'd go around the world and back again if I knew that single act might make your day better. I'm a proud man. I'm a proud black man. Does any of this really matter? No. I just wanted you to get to know me better before you call the cops. That was part of a video posted by Nashville-based actor and activist Tyler Merritt back in 2018, but it didn't become a viral sensation until two years later, after the murder of George Floyd. The video reignited conversations about being black in America. Now, Merritt is on a mission to create an environment that helps people learn more about those who are different from them. And Tyler joins us now. He's the author of the new book, I Take My Coffee Black, Reflections on Tupac, Musical Theater, Faith, and Being Black in America. It paints a portrait of black manhood in America and encourages readers to reconsider stereotypes deeply ingrained in our society. So Tyler, thank you so much for being with us. You know, one of the fascinating things, uh, not only about the video, but also about the book is, you're not just coming at it from, hey, this is my perspective, this is where I am, understand me, or you're a bigot. What you do is say, no, 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 we've got to build communities. I've got to go into your community. You should come into my community. You should know me. We need to build a bigger community where you know me, but I know you as well. Talk about that. Well, first of all, let me say... Joe and Mika, I'm so glad to be with you today in Roll Tide, bro, Roll Tide. Um, Roll Tide. Listen, <laughs> I'll tell you, there are very few things in the world that I believe in more than proximity. I happen to be one of those individuals that was blessed enough to be able to share community growing up in Las Vegas around so many people that, was, that were different than I was. So it means something to me when I see somebody who yeah. doesn't look like me to understand who they are. And typically, Joe and Mika, my default is love. If I can find a common ground, be it laughter, be it a television show that we may share, be it a story about your background that goes in line with who I am, I really believe that I can begin to see you on a level that is so much deeper than what you look like on the outside, because that matters. Well, in your book, Tyler, you write about this story, um, and it's really powerful. Uh, it was a fall day in Nashville. I put on my Alabama sweatshirt. I put on my bandana and my sunglasses. And I put on my wireless Bluetooth Beats by Dre headphones. As I was walking down the street, on the other side was an older white woman. I knew in that instant, because when you live in the South, you're six foot two and black with dreadlocks, you know how some people perceive you. I was keenly aware that my blackness was going to be a problem. I took off the hood to my sweatshirt to expose my face. I wanted to appear like a black Mr. Rogers. I put on a <laughs> smile. As I got within a few feet of her, she saw me. This woman practically jumped out of her seat, grabbed her purse from the passenger seat, and then frantically rolled up her window. I wanted to say, lady, if you only knew mm. how much work I just put into trying to make sure what just happened didn't just happen. I tell you all this because for me, it's not just a story. For me, it could very well be a matter of life and death. Even when I try my absolute hardest, there is still nothing I can do to make some people feel safe. I'm curious. Um, if you ever get incredibly discouraged? First of all, thanks for that reading. I, I, it's been a while since I've read that chapter and I found myself moved by your reading. Thank you, Mika. Um, I'll tell you this, I've learned 
respectfully that as a black man in America, I don't have the privilege to lose hope. I don't have the privilege to get so discouraged that I don't wake up every morning wanting for something new, wanting for something better. I come from a history of too many beautiful and brilliant individuals like Rev Sharpton, where I can look back over history and go, today may be hard, but tomorrow can be better. And hear me, as long as I have air in my lungs, I have the opportunity to make the world a better place. And I don't mean to be hyperbolic about it, but as long as I can wake up and do that, that's what I'm gonna choose to do. Tyler, as I hear the passage from your book, Mika Red, and, and look over your book, part of the quest is not only to say to others to understand me, don't prejudge me, don't uh, put me in a stereotype, but it's also to validate ourselves, uh, whether we are black, whether we are Latino, whether we are HIV positive, whatever category you put us, I get validation by saying to you and others that I'm not what you think I am. Talk, talk about how you validate yourself by not being uh, just boxed into what somebody may perceive you to be. Sure. I feel like we need to go way beyond the idea of I just don't want you to be afraid of me. Forget that part. That's just the ground level. It goes way beyond that. Not only do I not want you to be afraid of me, but I want you to look in my eyes. I want you to love me. I want to make you laugh. I want to become one of your favorite people. The idea that we're living in a world where it just, if I could just get to where you don't fear me, no, 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 no. I want to move beyond that. And in my book, listen, there are so many brilliant books out there that talk about being black, that talk about brown skin, that talk about black skin. I wanted to write a book where by the time you were in the middle of the book, you felt like you knew me deep. Maybe even more than you know some of the people that are in your everyday personal life. And if I could bring that kind of proximity into the experience of you reading my words, then maybe, just maybe, by the time that you close it, you will feel like we are way beyond fear, but we have moved on to love. I cannot wait. This is one of my favorite shows, and I can't wait for your readers, for your watchers to read this book, because it's one of those things that um, might change their life a little bit. Yeah, and also, as you delve into that and you say what you want people to have in terms of their uh, feeling, uh, you can find some common ground. Uh, you know, Joe and I always talk about how we started off politically opposed to each other and then became friends and become genuine friends now. And part of that bond was both of us grew up in the Baptist church. It was different regions of the country, different races, but it was the same experience. And we would have never known that if we didn't get to know each other. There is a commonality that people will find if they just go over the fence and talk to the person on the other side and find out they may not be that different than you think they are. I heard you speaking in the segment before about people leaving our synagogues and leaving the churches and, and the pews being empty. Somewhere in the midst of this, I think we have forgotten about the default of love. I think we have forgotten about what our churches that have become uh, political places and nationalist representations, we forgot where the love started. And I think that's why it's so beautiful to be able to watch a show like this and see you, Rev Al, and to see you, Joe, two individuals that some might say could never just sit down in front of each other and share a cup of coffee and really get to know each other. You all were rooted in the church, which starts on this level of love. And that did, let me be really clear. I'm not saying that the church has to be in everybody's life, but I do feel that when we begin with love, we can then grow from a point to be able to sit in front of each other and have our conversation mean so much more than just words. I don't just see your political affiliation, but I see you, and that matters.
Exactly. It does. The new book is titled, I Take My Coffee Black, Tyler Merritt. It is such a pleasure to meet you. It's great to have you awesome on the show. Awesome to have you here. Please come back. Great to meet Can't you, Tyler. Wait. Thank you.